Don't you just hate all those news outlets that have absolutely no idea what paleontology even is, posting articles in which they make tons of mistakes and can't help but reference the only dinosaur franchise that has a stranglehold on the industry? Scientific mistakes aside, it always ends up with at least one reference to Tyrannosaurus, no matter how closely or distantly related the subject of the article is. However, sometimes it just fits. Probably the most valid comparison of a new dinosaur to Tyrannosaurus is found in a brand new species of Tyrannosaur of a long and well-known genus. Let's talk about Tespletosaurus wilsoni. Since their discovery, at the start of the 20th century, Tyrannosaurids have captured the fiery imagination of both the public and academics, and they are now one of the most best studied families of Cretaceous theropod dinosaurs. The latest Cretaceous Tyrannosaurines, which included a broad array of species ranging from slender-snouted Alliuramines to robust and deep-jawed taxa like Teratophonius and the namesake Tyrannosaurus, were perhaps the most successful group of Tyrannosaurids. However, most of the variety of Tyrannosaurines remains unstudied or poorly understood, making it difficult to grasp paleobiogeographic and evolutionary trends. There is a hidden diversity of Tyrannosaurs that is yet to be fully sussed out, if it even can be. And one of the most diverse, at least as far as can be known, seems to be Despletosaurus. Despletosaurus, a name which translates to frightful lizard, has been known to science for a century when it was discovered in the dry, rocky outcrops outside of the ghost town of Steveville, Alberta by Charles Sternberg. Once it was prepared and brought back to the Canadian Museum of Nature, and then further prepared, it was considered to be a specimen of the already known Tyrannosaur, Gorgosaurus. It wasn't until the 1970s that more researchers saw it for what it was, a bigger and heftier Tyrannosaur. This first specimen was given the name of Despletosaurus taurosus and remained the only specimen for the genus and species until a new fragmentary one was found in 2001 by the Royal Tyrrell Museum. Thanks to the fragmentary nature of much of the Tyrannosaur fossil record and a hidden diversity, various Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Despletosaurus, and unidentifiable Tyrannosaur specimens and remains have been variously added and subtracted from the list of names I just rattled off. This means that Despletosaurus has seen more than a few specimens added to it and taken away over the centuries since its discovery. For example, one specimen found by the renowned Tyrannosaur finder Barnum Brown in 1913 was considered by Dale Russell, the guy who named Despletosaurus in 1970 and also the guy who hypothesized the dinosauroid was eventually applied to the Despletosaurus genus by Russell. This specimen is considered the paratype, or a second specimen found of a species that helps to define it. Despletosaurus fossils seem to only come from rocks dating to between 75.6 and 75 million years ago, making those found outside that bracket to be interesting outliers with evolutionary indications. Barnum Brown found another Tyrannosaur in 1914, which was sold to the Field Museum 40 years after he found it. This thing was filled in with plaster and mounted for display, a common practice at the time. Decades after this, the extent of the reconstruction job was realized, and the specimen was reanalyzed. It was also a Despletosaurus. Tyrannosaur expert Thomas Carr even assigned the specimen to the Despletosaurus taurosa species. Over eight specimens have since been found of Despletosaurus from Canadian rocks, though many researchers suspect some or all represent different species. A Tyrannosaur from New Mexico, found in 1990, was first named Oblisodon and then thrown into the then wastebasket Despletosaurus before being found as a new and much more primitive Tyrannosaur, Bistayeversaur. To round out the second half of our brief trip through the history of Despletosaurus discovery, a couple more have been found south of Canada. One was found in the Two Medicine Formation of Montana in 1992 by Tyrannosaur hater and duckbill lover Jack Horner. Since then, five have been recovered from the Two Medicine Formation. One was applied to the Despletosaurus genus, but not to any species. This one had a hadrosaur in its gut cavity. 
The 1992 specimen was given a scientific designation in 2017, Daspletosaurus horneri. A bone bed of tyrannosaurs from the two medicine found by Philip Curry may also be the second species. Treebold Paleontology, the company behind the Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park, Colorado, found a tyrannosaur in the Judith River Formation of Montana. It was given the nickname of Sir William and is suspected to be a unique species of Despletosaurus or even a completely new genus. Finally, we reach the reason for today's video. In 2017, a team of paleontologists and volunteers from the Badlands Dinosaur Museum in Dickinson, North Dakota, traveled out to outcrops of the Judith River Formation outside of Glasgow Valley County, Montana for some digging. A member of the team, Jack Wilson, spotted a small flat piece of bone projecting out from the bottom of a towering cliff. This distinctive flat bone was the middle part of the nostril of a tyrannosaur. Careful digging around the bone revealed a complete premaxilla, the bone at the tip of the snout. A few broken vertebrae from around the site showed that this was a large tyrannosaur, but there was 25 feet 8 meters of rock overlying the bones. Field crews in 2020 and 2021 used a jackhammer to dig down to the bone layer, whereupon they discovered a partial skull and skeleton. The seemingly endless task of removing overburden gave rise to the specimen's nickname, Sisyphus, after the figure from Greek mythology. 2017 turned out to be a bumper year for Badlands Dinosaur Museum as Dr. Denver Fowler and Jack Wilson found four tyrannosaur sites in the local area. These have been successively excavated from 2017 to 2022, revealing three partial skeletons and what appears to be a mostly complete articulated skeleton. The first site became known as Jack's B2, and all told, the team recovered a partial disarticulated skull, neck, pelvis, and tail vertebrae, a rib, chevron, and first metatarsal, or toe bone. The specimen was given a number BDM-107 and was just published by Ilyas, Warshaw, and Denver Fowler in the Pier J publication journal as a new species of Despletosaurus, Despletosaurus wilsoni, named after Jack. The specimen, BDM-107, specifically preserves a partial disarticulated skull and postcranium, which included the specific bones of both premaxillae, the front bones here a right maxilla, the major chunk of the upper jaw here, the right jugal, a piece of the cheek, the right lacrimal, the eye bone that makes the crest, the right quadrate bone, a slim piece of the part of the skull that attaches to the thing that attaches to the lower jaw and the brain case, the quadrato jugal, the part that is the hinge for the lower jaw, the dentary, or the long bit of the lower jaw that has the teeths and the right splenial, which is a tiny chunk of the lower jaw. Then, the specimen also has a left postorbital bone, the triangular strut that makes up the back part of the eye socket, and a left squamosal bone, which attaches to the postorbital, quadrate, and quadratojugal bones. Aside from that, the specimen also preserves partial neck, pelvis, and tail vertebrae, and some more bits I think I already noted. The crispity, crunchity noggin bones are very finely preserved, with intricate and detailed surface textures, especially on the maxilla and postorbital bones, with teeth preserved in the maxilla, dentary, and one premaxilla. The center, disc-like parts of the vertebrae, called centrum, in the pelvic and tail vertebrae are preserved in a heavy and hard concretion, and are not yet prepared. The Jack's B2 dig site from which the specimen was found is significantly further east than classic Judith localities and is sedimentologically atypical, representing distal floodplain and delta sediments deposited during the maximum Campanian regression of the western interior seaway. Campanian being an age of the late Cretaceous from 83.6 to 72.1 million years ago, give or take. Here, the Judith River formation is up to 48 meters thick, with the Jack's BT site occurring 30 meters below the contact with the overlying Bear Paw Shale. Precise stratigraphic placement of this easternmost Judith is currently unclear, although an age of 76.5 million years ago seems most likely, 
which would correlate in time with the lower to middle parts of the Dinosaur Park formation of Alberta, where plenty other Daspletosaurus fossils are found. The younger age limit of 75.64 million years ago is delineated by ammonites tentatively identified as Didymoceras stephensoni, collected by BDM from local outcrops of the overlying Bear Paw Shale. Although these were not at the base of the Bear Paw, so older ammonite specimens may be encountered during future prospecting. At present, more precise stratigraphic position can be inferred from the timing of the maximum regression of the Western Interior Seaway during the Campanian. In Alberta and Saskatchewan, the foremost Oldman and Dinosaur Park formations represent early to late subcycles, respectively, of the regression. And of these, the foremost formation, 80.5 to 79.5 million years ago, and lower Oldman formation, 79.5 to 79 million years ago, are restricted to the west, Alberta and west central Montana, and did not extend as far east as Saskatchewan or the study area in eastern Montana. During late seaway regression time, the Upper Oldman, 77.5 to 77 million years ago, and Dinosaur Park, 76.9 to 76 million years ago formations were deposited much further to the east, with the lowermost Dinosaur Park recording the maximum regression at 76.9 to 76.4 million years ago. This correlates well with the Judith River formation of Montana. Regardless of the precise time intervals for the new Despletosaurus Wilsoni, it is clearly from a time in between the previously known Despletosaurus species, Taurosus and Horneri. What does its placement in time mean for its evolutionary history? Back when the Despletosaurus Horneri species was published, Tyrannosaur expert Thomas Carr hypothesized that what we are seeing with the known Despletosaurus species and Tyrannosaurus is called anagenesis, when one species evolves directly into another in a sequence. This is rarely ever provable for fossil species because there are so many transitional fossils missing, but it does happen sometimes. Carr suggested that Despletosaurus terosus was the older species that evolved directly into Despletosaurus horneri, which eventually evolved into Tyrannosaurus. The new Despletosaurus wilsoni fits rather snugly in between the terosus and horneri species, both in time and based on the traits preserved in the bones. It also happens to fall within the same geographic range as the other two species. There is little doubt that the other species of Despletosaurus that many researchers suggest should be their own unique species may further fill in gaps between these three species. It should definitely be noted, however, that despite the fulfillment of the criteria of anagenesis as a strong and defensible hypothesis for the existence of these three species, it does not mean that these three species and any other unnamed ones could not possibly represent species that split off and diverged into new species over time rather than evolving directly into one another with no branching. It just seems like the less likely of the two explanations at this time. Since the 1990s, debate has surrounded Despletosaurus, a large Tyrannosaurid species known from Montana and Alberta, which has been proposed to be an ancestor of Tyrannosaurus rex itself, said Montana State University researcher Elias Warshaw and Badlands Dinosaur Museum curator Denver Fowler in a statement. Reconstructing the evolutionary relationships of Despletosaurus has been hampered by the rarity of good specimens, and many paleontologists disagree as to whether these Tyrannosaurids represent a single lineage evolving in place or several closely related species that do not descend from one another. Despletosaurus wilsoni displays a mix of features found in more primitive Tyrannosaurs from older rocks like a prominent set of horns around the eye, as well as features otherwise known from later members of this group, including Tyrannosaurus rex, like a tall eye socket and expanded air pockets in the skull. In this way, the new species is a halfway point, or missing link, between older and younger Tyrannosaurus species. In the late Cretaceous of North America, many dinosaur families are represented by multiple closely related species, the paleontologist said. These were previously thought to represent diversity, i.e. that they lived at the same time, which would be evidence of branching evolution. However, a wealth of new specimens and a better understanding of their placement in time has changed what we think. 
We can now see that many of these species are actually very finely separated in time from each other, forming consecutive ladder-like steps in a single evolutionary lineage, where one ancestral species evolves directly into a descendant species. This is called the anagenesis mode of evolution and is contrasted with cladogenesis, where successive branching events produced many species that are closely related and therefore look similar to each other but represent evolutionary cousins rather than ancestors and descendants. Our study supports the addition of tyrannosaurs to a growing list of dinosaurs, including horned and duckbill dinosaurs, for which anagenesis, linear evolution, has been proposed. This seems to suggest that linear evolution is more widespread in dinosaurs, with branching evolution being less frequent than previously thought. Wonder how many more species we will see described in the coming years. And that's all I got for you. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman, 